Hello, maybe we won't freeze this time. Hmm. Three cheers for Apple. <laughs> So anyway, I think you saw me do a couple of these. Hopefully you saw me get it on there. You're still alone. There's nobody watching you. Oh, okay. It's a sad day in video land. Sorry. You are all alone. Oh no, a few people have found you. Okay. Yeah. They're coming back. They're coming back. Yay, they're coming back. They didn't leave us. We may have frustrated a few. So let me ask those who are watching, were you able to see how I boiled this piece? We can know. Lori's in Indiana. She's watching. Okay. Lori, did you see him foil the piece? Do you have any questions regarding the foiling? The hand foiling? Foiling by hand? Bobby's watching. Hi, Bobby. Chris saw you foil it. Okay. Kathy saw you foil it. Okay, good. Dennis, is this take three? Three or four, Dennis? I'm not sure. <laughs> Julie didn't see it. Julie! Oh, Julie. I'll do it. I'll do it one more time, okay? I'll do it one more time. I'm just going to rip this one off. I'll rip it off, maybe. Hopefully I didn't burnish it all that well. You're unfoiling? I'm unfoiling. Is there a tool for that? Um, I use an X-Acto knife when I'm unfoiling and it's being um, stubborn. I'll just take a, an X-Acto knife and then kind of rub it along. So, foil, my foiling technique, attributed to Joanne D'Antono of Shards in Peabody, Massachusetts, is to make a shark. When the foil the shark. shark bites. The foil shark. The foil comes in through the shark mouth towards you, the backing up, the um, adhesive side down, so that you can use your ring finger as a table. with the glass in between you and the foil so that you can see exactly where that half point is on that foil. You unfurl the backing with your thumb. You press your foil into the glass with your ring finger and when you're unable to keep the glass between you and the foil, you can do it sometimes like this so that you can see down where the half point is on the foil. Thank you. Almost lost my foil. Tragic. And then I overlap about a quarter of an inch, then take my X-Acto knife, I'll hold my foil down and just snip up. And then, because I have already taken this over to the grinder and done a really quick swipe around with the grinder and gotten all the really sharps off, I'm confident going around with my finger getting the um, foil onto the front and the back of the glass. If I had done a fresh cut and not taken this to the grinder, I would not want to do that because they could uh, um, cut through the foil and cut my fingers and that would hurt. And the foil can be sharp too. Yes, it can be, very much so. So now you just need to burnish it. I'm not gonna show that. Um, Burnishing is relatively easy, and you know what that is. But now, that's my hand, how I do it by hand. Glass Star makes an excellent foiler. 
Now the thing about the glass star foiler is that, and this is an older model, the new ones are black plastic, this is an older model, uh, but it's the same design, it works exactly the same. The trick with the glass star foiler is that you want to make, you want to get this nut over here the right amount of tight. Um, you don't want it too hard so that the foil won't unfurl. I'm going to be using foil on this side. I'm going to open up this side just to show you how it works. So the foil goes on. It comes with three rollers, quarter inch, seven thirty seconds, and three sixteenths. So you can do three different sizes. You put your foil in here. You lock it onto the roller here. It comes up. There's a little guide here for the adhesive to go over to the roller. The backing comes up off of it. Let's see, let's like, so like show you. So you can see how the foil is lifting off. The nut. The, the tricky thing about the glass star foiler is getting the nut here to the right um, tautness or holding the, the roller on you. It doesn't, you don't want it too tight so it's not moving. You don't want it too loose. You just need to get it to the point where it's pulling easily, but not too easily. So a little bit of resistance. A little bit of resistance. Then, you can see there's a guide here for the 732nd roller. Again, you want to start in the middle of your project. Put it in there. You don't want to push too hard because pushing too hard is going to crink it and tear it. When you get down to here, you want to move up. So you see that I have this foiler kind of sitting off the edge of the table. Am I stuck? No. So that I have enough room to travel down if I need to. I'm going to overlap about a quarter of an inch like I did the other way, the other one. Snip it. And it does a very, very nice job of evenly getting the foil on both sides. So that's the glass star foiler. And then and did again, did that fold the foil over? It folds it over, but you still need to burnish it. It does not burnish it for you. You still need to burnish it. And you need to burnish it very carefully because you don't want it to rip. Right here, I don't know if you can see this, but right here where I have the quarter overlap, it didn't quite meet exactly, so I'm going to trim that away. Because that's going to show up in my project if I don't trim that away. So that's the glass star foiler. I haven't completely burnished this, but I will. And any questions on the glass star foiler? Well, I like how it rolled it over. That took away that sharp edge concern that you have with the hand foiling. Right, exactly. Okay, very good. Glass Star Foiler. Our product code is GLA40200, and it's $34.50. We can ship that anywhere. <laughs> True enough. Um, finally, soldering. I wanted to show you a couple of different things on soldering. I wanted to kind of highlight, we have, we have two um, brands of solder here in the store. We have the Amray, Amerway, sorry, A-M-E-R-W-A-Y, Amerway, and we have Canfield. Uh, Canfield is kind of the granddaddy, it's the, the, the uh, they've been around forever, and they're um, kind of the standard in stained glass solder. Um, but we do offer the Amaway, which is generally $2 cheaper per pound, and each roll is a pound. Today I want to talk about a technique that some people, um, 
I've started using where you do your 10 and, or sometimes it's called a flat solder. You do that in the 50-50 and then you do your bead in a ultimate, the Canfield 6337. Why would I want to do this? The 50-50 can, the, the solder melts at a higher temperature than the 6737 or the 6040, if you want to use a 6040, which is totally fine. I like the ultimate solder from Canfield for my bead because it sets up a little quicker than the 6040, so that's why I'm using that. So the 5050 melts at a higher temperature. Once it um, sets, I'm going to use a lower temperature for, with the 6337 so that I won't, I shouldn't have any bleed throughs at that point because the bottom layer is set and this is set at a lower temperature so it's not going to melt the 50-50 for bleed throughs. All right, and let me show you how that looks. What so that looks like. A couple questions about your foiler. Yep. What's the thickness of the foil you can use and how do you determine the width of the foil to use? Okay, good question. The width of the foil, I, I generally use 7 30 seconds for everything. Um, if I have a particularly thin piece of glass, I was using a, bl a, a Blinko glass, a hand-blown Blinko at one point, which is very much thinner, and I use, I think, a 5 30 second on it for sections of it because it was thin at one point and it got thicker, and so it was, it was a little... Oh, uh, fun. Yeah, yeah, it was a little challenging. Um, but 7.30 seconds, you're pretty much good with the 7.30 seconds. A lot of people like a much thinner line, and if you like a much thinner line, I would go 3 sixteenths for your width. Um, the thickness of the foil, I think the thickness of this is like 0 0.00125. It's called a mill, point, 1.25 mils yeah, so or 1.0 mils. It's, it's very, it's very thin. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never come up uh, against an issue with how thick the foil was. Now I've always, and I think I've only always used Edco foil, um, which I, I, I love Edco foil. Um, I know I have friends who also swear by Venture, um, but I've never used Venture, so I can't speak to it. Um, does that answer the question? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. So I'm using a uh, Old Masters Lux on this uh, from Novacan. Uh, it's our code NC0012, and it's $6.99 for an eight ounce bottle. It's an excellent flux. But your jar says Frit. It does say Frit, that's because we put it in a Frit jar. <laughs> um, my soldering iron, I have an FX601, which is the absolute best soldering iron for stained glass, in my opinion. Uh, it's set to 410 at the moment, and I'm using the 5050, which likes a higher heat. So I'm just gonna set this on here and do my, very poorly, do my tack. And this is just setting up my base. This is my base. And if I have any gaps in my glass, like right here, there's a nice gap here. I'm gonna to try to fill that in. It's always nice to have a couple, a couple of gaps in your glass because you want your solder to end up being a little I-beam just like uh, a piece of lead is a little I-beam. So that's a nice flat solder. The only other thing I would like to talk about with soldering is if you are, if you just finished your, finished foiling your project and say you're gonna go on vacation for two weeks, you should always tin your solder before you leave on vacation so it doesn't oxidize further. And so I am going to 
just, you know, a little bit of solder will go a long way when you're tinning. And you don't need to do any kind of bead or anything. This is just coloring. You're coloring the, the copper so the air can get to it and oxidize it. Because if you go away for two or three weeks and you come back, it's going to be really difficult to, um, to solder this unless you have a really, really good aggressive flux. Thank you, George, for moistening my... You're welcome. What is the material your table is made of? This, this table here? Yes. This is homosote. And we spoke about homosote at the very top of this video. Um, homosote is great. Um, it's fire retardant. It's soft. It's self-healing to a degree. You can screw into it. And when you pull those screws out or unscrew, the holes are going to self-heal to a degree. Um, it's uh, soft. It's lightweight. It's easily easy to, to ship. So this is homosote, H-O-M-A-S-O-T-E, homosote. So now that I have a nice base of 50-50, I'm gonna turn down my soldering iron a little bit. And what's wonderful about the FX601 is that when you adjust your temperature, it's going to tell you when it gets to that temperature and tell you that it's holding its temperature by blinking at you. And it does that very quickly. I'm, very, I'm just really impressed with the Hako. So when I solder, I like to hold my iron at a 45 degree angle to my project. And then I feed the wedge. Oop, too much. Now I'll go down this line first, like this, and do a, you know, not a great bead, but a halfway decent bead, and then I'll go over it again. So I do all of my solder lines basically three times. I ten, well, four times. I'll ten and do my flat, then do my 50-50, then build my bead, then go back and just go down the line. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. Then go down my bead one more time to smooth it out. Did you solder the back side with 50-50 as well? Um, uh, I don't think I'm going, no, I don't need to on the back side. Generally, I go right to the bead on the back side. Don't have quite enough solder on here. Because you've already locked in with the, 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 the base on the other side with the 50-50, so nothing's going to go through nothing should go through your cracks. You shouldn't have any bleed throughs or anything. And I don't like this area here. So if you have an area that you don't like, you can go right down on it, let everything melt, and then lift right back up. So go right down on it, let everything around it melt, and then lift right back up. This down here, I don't like this. I'm gonna go down on it, let everything melt, and then lift back up. And that didn't work. So I add just a little bit. There, I like that. So that is a little bit about 50 50, 63 67, 63 37, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a little bit about soldering. Any questions on soldering? So everybody understand why I did the 50-50 and why I did the 63-37. Any questions? Hmm? I'm here for you. You want to do your twister? I am. I'm going to do my twister next. Okay. My, my, this next piece is just kind of fun. fun. This is one of my favorite things in stained glass. So down at the end of the table, I have my Morton twister. So the Morton twister is... Our code M, T is in Tom, 01, it's 599. This is all it is, this guy right here. So say you're at home, 
you have some um, uh, tinned wire at, at home, but all you have is 20 gauge tinned wire. All you have is 20 gauge, and that's just really, really thin. You really wanted a like a 14 gauge or maybe a 12 gauge. So what you can do is use your Morton twister to create your 12 gauge. So I have taken some of this 20 gauge R4 tinned copper wire. I've run four lengths of it down, back, down, and back. I've tied it off to this nail. I've tied it off to my Morton twister right here. And all I'm gonna do now is twist. Twisting, twisting, twisting. Still twisting. And what I come up with is a nice thicker wire. And you can do it with all kinds of uh, wire. You can do it with, you know, not just the 2020, but you, uh, 20 gauge, you can do a 12 gauge. You can do different gauges and put them together and do decorative things with it. Um, I really have a great time with some of the wires that I create. So there was a question about what was the name of the soldering iron? Oh, uh, the name of the soldering iron is such a great soldering iron. FX601 from Hako. Um, our cost is 89, I think it's 89.99. Uh, it comes with an internal temperature control. It's such a great iron. So this is another thing you can do with the Morton Twister. This is a decorative uh, border that I like to put around some of my uh, round copper foil projects. I did a uh, an undersea, a round undersea copper foil project once, and I created this and I wrapped it around um, the project, and it really kind of added to the undersea vibe of the piece. So that's twisting wire. To get this, what I've done is I've set up a piece of quarter inch. H flat lead. I have the other end in my vise, my lead vise, and I'm going to stick this in through my Morton twister and just kind of like bend it off the cap. And then I'm just going to twist it. Then I have a nice little decorative edging to any project. Nice. So what you want to do when you when you tack this onto your project at home, you want to tack this. Um, you know, try to try to find a flat section that you can tack to a, a joint that meets the end edge of your project. So that's what I have today for my demo. I don't have anything else planned. What questions do you all have? I'll be right back. I'm looking for the code for the twister. The number on the Morton Twister is MT. M is in Mary, T is in Tom, zero. It's right here. Oh, we got it. And I don't know if um, the other person heard the FX601. Did we, did we already answer this FX601? I think so. Okay. Any, any other questions that I can answer for you today? Cleaning flux. What is your best method to clean flux? Um, clean flux uh, cleaning flux, I like the NutraClean from... Uh, Stellar. Stellar Technologies makes NutraClean. It's a very good product. 
It neutralizes the uh, flux. One of the things I've been experimenting with, but I haven't, um, I haven't kind of settled in on, is using paste flux for my copper foil projects. Um, I've used it on a couple of copper foil projects, and what I like about the paste flux and copper foil is that it's a no corrode. It's called no corrode paste flux, and so it doesn't corrode. And especially for us being down here in Florida with salty air all around us, you know, our project projects have a tendency to get little oxidation and flaky, flaky stuff on it. And so I, I have found that using paste flux helps, but I haven't, I haven't settled, it hasn't become a habit yet. George is getting something to answer another question, I believe, so hold on. And we'll have another about answer how to bend zinc. How to what? How to bend, bend zinc. zinc. Oh, I love bending zinc. Um, if you have... Do we, do you want to show? Yeah, I just wanted to get back to the question again. How do you bend zinc for an oval piece that's 15 by 18? Uh, oval's tough. I, I've done one oval in my life, and it was... It was not easy. Um, you got to do it in two half ovals, right? Right, right. You. George is going to. That's the cane bender. You got to have a cane bender. It clamps to the table, and then it has a crank that turns the zinc through the wheels. So you put the basically you put the uh, zinc. This comes up. Mm -hmm. This moves up, you put the zinc in between these rollers and this roller. This roller will push into the zinc, causing it to bow. Bow, mm -hmm. exactly. Doing a oval bow, I, I, have, I don't have enough experience to, to give you any advice on that. I just haven't done it enough. I've done it once. What can I use to shape wire around the sun catcher? The one I'm working on has leaves, which is difficult to bend around. So repeat that one more time. Bending wire around a sun catcher. So I, I take it it's an, it's an odd shaped leaf and she wants to bend the wire all the way around the border to hang it. Okay. But yeah, it, it should be straightforward. I would just um, take it and bend it as you need to and attack it at the joints. Uh, I, I wouldn't attack it all along the edge. That's not true. I would certainly make sure it's tacked at all the joints that meet the edge of the project. Um, so if you have a leaf, like a leaf that is something like this, right? Or how about the braided wire? Yeah. So are you, is your concern that you're holding the piece together or you're hanging it? I don't know, but that's that's the, um, the braided wire, which is much softer, and can make those bends more easily to to reinforce and strengthen the outside border. And then you can put a, a loop on the top, right, right, right. As, as something to hang from with the wire. Right, but a wire should be pretty straightforward. I mean, just to go around the project. Yeah, he says he's trying to hold it together. Okay, yeah. And hanging. So <laughs> yeah, I just put the wire around it, and you can build a bead, you know, hold it up and build a bead so that the wire is actually encased in the bead all around your project. That's what I would do. Um, and a good way to hold your project up if you need to. Oh, those aren't harsh units. I remember. If I had a hammer, 
It's in the toolbox behind you. I would hammer. So, um, what are we trying to do? If you want to hold your project, so, so say you have this project here and you want to bead the edge here. So what I would do is build myself a little jig with some horseshoe nails. So, that's not going to work project. so great with my plywood tabletop. It would work with a plywood tabletop. I better have homosote. Homo soda would be better than a plywood tabletop. Uh, and then you can hold your project up like this. If you need to set it, and, and you really, when you're dropping your beads, this needs to be very, very level. So if you need to hold it in one hand and uh, dip into the solder and drop, dip and drop, dip and drop, dip and drop. That's what I do. Braided wire is our item code 5425 for a package of 25 feet. Any other questions? If not, I thank you, and George thanks you, and Gina thanks you, and Jesse and Sherry, thank you. Everybody here thanks you for Bert, stopping Bert, by. Bert, Bert. Oh, and Bert and Bert. Bert thanks you too. Bert's probably watching. Hi, Bert. Mia's uh, really glad you joined us today. Uh, so thanks for stopping in. Thanks for being here. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, and we should be announcing another live demo in the next couple of weeks for August. All right. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Apple rules. <laughs>